Mm, pretty impressive, eh? Welcome back. This is one of the machines you can find in the Cabaret Mechanical Theatre in Covent Garden here in London. And our guest today is Paul Spooner, who makes lots of the machines that, uh, that you can find there. When did you start making machines like this, Paul? Only about five years ago, I think. Yeah? 1980, 81, something like that. Why? Um, well, I made them first for children I know to give them as cheap clothes, cheaper than buying Lego, I suppose. So uh, I made them, and there was a shop in Falmouth called Cabaret at the time, just Cabaret. And I took the spare ones, I made a few extras, took them in there, and they sold them, and I got cracking. So they really are absolutely remarkable. I mean, how did you... Uh, let me just show everyone this one. Now, what's it called? And the other question was, how does someone like yourself, an artistic, an artist really at heart, um, is so clever with the mechanics of something like this? Well, I was a mechanical sculptor when I was a sculptor. I made machines anyway. And my dad's an engineer, and uh, I like playing with such things. So Nothing to stop you being a mechanical sculptor. It's not a necessary part of sculpture if it doesn't move. So how's this working? I, I can see the little fly. Perhaps you can just talk us through it. Yes, there's the lever that attaches, is attached to the arm and the fly so that they can never, never in fact meet, although they get very close, as close as you can without having a disaster. And the stirring just happens all the time from that little wheel there. It's great. It really is good. What's it called? I forgot what I call it now. It's just a, it's a jackal in a cafe. Yeah, and Ubis, coffee. Lord of the mummy, mummy Wrappings, really. He's an Egyptian god. It's telling that fly. Long story. There's another one here. Now, what's this one called? This is called a cat drinking someone else's milk. And tell me about the mechanics of this one. Well, this has a little bellows here which sucks air out of the big bellows and causes the milk to go down. When you stop cranking there, yes. the big bellows will reinflate because it leaks a bit and the milk comes up to the top and mm. you can start again. How long does it take to make something like this? Well, it's very difficult to say, but I would think that Actually, from, the, from your plans, once you've done all the drawings and fiddling around, it'd probably take about 10 days to do that flat out. And how much would it cost? It costs about £700, pounds, really? I fear. Yes. Yes. I couldn't afford that with my pocket money. But there is something that I might be able to afford in the future, in the way of your new book. And perhaps yes. you could explain what this goat here is about. Let me just Well, this, show is, it this is chapter one of the book, which has seven chapters in it. And this is just about as simple as you can get. It's a goat chewing in the characteristic way of goats. And it's just worked with little bits of string underneath. You can... And there are seven other characters that you can cut out of... There are seven other of... things of increasing complexity, yes. Yeah. So how, how clever do you have to be to make a model like this? Well, I would think... I would think somebody, a clever person of ten up would be able okay. to do it. So I should just about be able to manage it? Well, you'll have to have a little test run first. <laughs> <and that's right. laughs> All right, OK.